Yo, 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 everybody, how you doing? This is my fist only run, and the question I wanted to explore is can you beat Elden Ring with using only a case just and blood on step, aka the boxer build? <laughs> Many challenges await, which is pretty much me saying I died a bunch of times. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You broke my back is broken. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> And many triumphs along the way, with extremely satisfying bare knuckle reposts. I'm gonna take you down. Getting drop shot by Draconic Sentinel with no range is always fun. No! God, please, no! 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 And getting skewered like a Sunday night football shish kebab by Margaret the Omen King. Come on over here! Come on over here! No, you flip me off! Come on, coward! No, 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 come on! You're not an intellectual! You're a fake and a fraud! Without further ado, welcome to my only fist, more specifically, Caestus Bloodhound Step Run. I had to start out with the Vagabond, because every rich boxer starts off as one, before becoming rich and famous, except for Jake Paul. If you're bullying kids out there, stop it! 30 seconds! Let's fucking go, 30 seconds! 30 seconds for the rest of your fucking life! <sighs> Go in! in. Hey, uppercut! Yeah! 30 seconds for the rest of your life! One second! Logan, cut your fucking career! Sticking with the traditional Patty Pimblet British bull cut, we move on to name, which will be Mr. Fister the Colon Twister. Every boss better be protecting that ass because I'm coming for it. This is how you lift them. Hitting those daily squats and deadlifts, this door didn't stand a chance. Making my way downtown, walking fast, white face mask, and I'm in Lingrave. About as much rhyming scale as Vanessa Carlton in Thousand Miles. Mr. Fister had taken a wee too many punches to the face and become cross-eyed in the process, but at least he still had all his eyes on like Michael Bisping. Staring into the expanse of Lingrade with no weapon in hand, it was time to find a way to level up and get our first off-the-street jail manufactured chain grappling glove. Go to the foot. Oh, I bequeath. <laughs> According to Melania's words, she said that I owed to her foot and that she was going to be queefing on me. All that ignored, I needed a steed to get around on and that PS5 wasn't going to secure itself. If you follow this path, you can literally level to 45 in 10 minutes of playing the game. Maybe even less. So I sped it up to show you people the route I took. Once you get to this side of Grace, just take a left when leaving the mine and it will lead to where I am going. Carefully navigate through the Burger King Lounge Kings and Wizard of Oz Flying Monkeys to light the fire and break the seal. That will open up the way to the next part we are going. I'd grab this next side of grace. If you don't know about the Skyrim parkour and the Indiana Jones rock trap, you're in for a delight. It's a trap! It's a trap! It's a trap! Just like Indiana Jones after nearly escaping a boulder death, I head to the Church of the Plague and grab myself a sacred tear, because I was going to need every bit of HP I could get. Catapulting ourselves up to Fort Faroth to get the best early game talisman Radagon Sword Seal and part of the Dectus Medallion. Ignore the sleeping dragon, we will come back to kill him later once we get the spiked Castus. I least suggest quitting out of the game at the bottom of the stairs to get around the rat trap, or it's very easy to get killed. To the north of Fort Faroth is the Knight Cavalry boss, who we can easily cheese to fall off the edge for early game souls. I know I used it in my first video, but he gets stuck as easy as an adult film actress starring in her first doing the laundry scene. Oh my god, stop bro, I'm stuck! Can you help me? Yeah, great. After getting the first 42,000 souls and enough to boost me up to level 26, I level up strength and dexterity, because that's what scales with the Caestus. I will get from the old man vagabond hobo on the cliffside. Follow this path if you want to do the bleed trick like I am doing, 
to kill the sleeping dragon much faster than normal and boost up to level 45 extremely quick. Watch out for the neighbor's dog in the park without any leash and collar because one misstep or deviation and you could become its snack. Put a freaking leash on your wife. Once I got to the old man vagabond hobo, I coughed up the shillings to buy a spiked castus. I take the Pokemon cards. Okay. Mm. What you doing? And I trade them. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. You trade them. Head to Murkwater Cave and let's kill P before the sleeping dragon, so we can gain more souls from the gold pickled finger that we can buy after receiving his bell from him. Oi, bruv. The main reason we came to kill him is so we can look like a bare knuckle boxer and get a wee bit of fashion souls going with wearing his leggings and gloves. Equipping his leggings and gloves, my Elden Ring drip was complete. Even if I had no skills yet, it's not the boxer, it's the gloves that matter, said Deontay Wilder to Tyson Fury. And to this day, to this day, to this day, this journeyman was ready to get a bit of a boost, and we ain't talking about TRT Victor Belfort. Use the gold pickled finger to get some more souls from the dragon. Next, I go over to Kaelid to go cheese Commander O'Neill for some easy come, easy go souls. That really only give me a couple levels because of how over leveled I made myself already. Since I was going with the flyweight build with only leather leggings and gloves, I head over to High Road Cave to get my most important talisman, the Blue Dancer Charm, which increases attack the lighter your load is. Margot was up next, and I think with how overleveled I was, he was more afraid of me than I was of him. Up close, I really only know how to dodge two of his moves consistently, and that was his wind up attack move and his hammer jump attack move he does in second phase. This was the calm before the storm, even though it was so early, I could tell with how small my reach was with the gloves that every boss was going to get progressively harder to read each attack. Oop, miss me. You can't touch this. Too slow with that tailspin. Was feeling like a Tachi with a main Gekio Sharing gun. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. Margot was cruising for a bruising, flopping for a behind jockin', and making for some easy taken. I rushed to Lakes of Lunaria and the capital to get both bell bearings to level up the only weapon I was gonna have throughout the entire game. Let me get punched to chest. Give him the knockout below. That was way easier than I thought. Going back to Stormvale Castle, I went to go fight Godric the Grafted, the long-handed Mac Daddy himself. Simply meant that there's never been a Mac Daddy like him of all the Macs that have played, of all the French men that have been Macs, of all the English men that have been Macs, of all the black men that have been Macs and Mac Daddies and players and pimps. Obama is the long-legged one. That means he is the most successful one. There has never been one of his caliber, and he probably will remain the longest-legged Mac Daddy. Men, you have to start making noise in bed. Following Rex Quando's fighting class, I learned from the best to punch him in the dick and walk away. I always thought that Dragonkin Soldier was an easy early game boss, but turns out he was giving me the Friday Night Smackdown. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back it? is broken. What a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. Six deaths too many later, he had been vanquished, 
and I don't even know why I fought him in the first place, because 16,000 runes wasn't enough to level up. Sith stood up next. It was an easy clap with blood on step. I just danced around all his moves and let the bleed do all the work for me. The only move he has that is tricky when you fight him up close is the three missile attack that is easily readable to dodge. I made quick work of him and was on to fight Ranala to get a great rune to enter the capital with. You'd think I'd be able to one phaser, but with the Casus being one of the worst weapons in the game, it made this a little bit more difficult. Just like Bernie changing the subject about the lobbyist he's worked with, I was going to play some whack-a-mole. Like my previous run, where I gangbanged her with my summons, I was going to use a similar method of running up on her and not giving her room to breathe between my fists. Mr. Fister was working it and he had side plans for her later, to show he wasn't just good with his hands. After a quick clap of her cheeks, and a couple bottles of KY jelly later, Turtle Pope had granted me the title of heretic. What did you do to her? Next up was the Draconic Sentinel, where I was going to be the bitch getting smacked up. After getting smacked around for 30 deaths, I nearly needed to step back and try something new. I started using the damage buff I got from Commander Neil, because it technically wasn't using the weapon against the boss, only as Ash of War. You might be wondering how I got up behind him without being detected. Well, using my Sly Cooper Pro moves, I stealthily crept up behind him without being detected. Like any hack and slash game, I was channeling my inner hash singing slasher and sticking to him like flies on shit. The rules had been reversed and he was getting smacked up. And we ain't talking about no teenage degenerate attending a Skrillex concert. The red lightning attack is what makes my pain in the ass, but the trick is just to sprint through it. Ooh, got lucky there. Didn't get lucky there though. No, oh, wrong potion. Using my strafe skills, I nearly get killed more times than I can count. Oh shit. Oi, boy, old Chansa. You must be looking it, cause you look locked in pinky. Come on, chug, chug, chug. Chug like your Irish Englishman. Honor McGregor. After being steamily ossified, it made the battle that much easier to take the hits and fight. Now that he now is a black belt, 10th degree at drunken monkey stance. No, I'm not backing out. There we go. Finally, fuck. Next, to was Godfrey, who I was going to be Kung Fu fighting. Everybody was Kung Fu. The hard part for me against Godfrey was finding openings big enough to get close to him to hit him with the fist. The long swing he has that lunges out to hit you was the perfect opportunity. I would circle him like a well-trained Daniel son, looking for Johnny Lawrence to strike first. Casper the unfriendly piss ghost was making my job hard by only providing that move every time I healed or used a consumable. So I ended up getting out my prattling pate to whisper, you're beautiful, to kill him with kindness, to provoke that attack. 
Also, giving him the Ollie shuffle at a certain distance seemed to work as well. Exchanging blows was working for me until I got down to my last potion. Since the Caestus couldn't inflict bleed on him, since he was a ghost, it took longer to kill him than previous bosses. There we go. Fuck. I told myself initially to fight Margot legit without the shackle. But after a couple deaths, I gave in to buying the shackle and cheesing him the easy way. Before patch 1.05, this was possible. So don't try this now because it won't work. What you used to be able to do was bang this three times in front of the fog wall. And after you entered, Margaret would be bricked up like Jeffrey Tubin, exposing himself on Zoom. Just standing there menacingly. Cigar, sir. Really? Out. Oh. Okay. Oh, Next was the infamous Trollgate, who I kept getting down to ten percent health and dying to. I get insane. Killer eight. Yeah. You gonna burn it out? I should have just ran. I should have known. I need sleepy time right now. I need sleepy time right now. That nice place I go to when I'm asleep. As you can see, this insane killer ape's fireballs are making me burn in hell at the last bit of health every time. I don't know what's worse, the fact that this boss has the most health in the game or that you have to watch his feet for 10 minutes every time you start a new fight. After turning him into an ankle biter, stage two gets no easier because you need to take distance to explode the fireballs, but I couldn't do that since fisting was the name of the game. Looking back and finding this on a soul level 1 character who took no hit to him, I probably should have been more patient and exploded the fireballs away from him, but hindsight wasn't 2020. Nearing the end of the fight, he pulls a double quad backflip 360 no scope on me and combos the fireballs along with the 360 flamethrower attack. Lucky for me, I had died too many times to this combo and knew his last stitch tactics. Radon was like the new convict trying to pick up the soap in the communal shower room. Little did you know, I was coming for that ass. Okay. They patched a lot of cheeses against Radon, but left a newly discovered method to make him sink in the ocean like a Michael Bay film. Yo, finally. Finally. Lie with the fishes, Radon. Next was Commander Sanji Blackfoot, who just kept killing me death after death after death. Because there is no easy way of killing his summons than fighting him after. The few times I did beat them, I could easily fight Commander Neil. But I racked up deaths fighting his summons. Do it! Just I hate this. Do it! I hate this boss. In the end I didn't have to fight him, but I thought it would be a good boss battle to do because he does use one of the best fist weapons in the game. This was a Sanji vs Luffy boss battle. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Fister, the colon twister, was really living up to his name. Hide your cheeks. Hide your back against the wall. Hide your wife, because there's a new fist in town. Well, obviously we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband, because they're raping everybody out here. The line was blurry on who was r wording who, because I was running away the whole time. After brutally finishing off his henchmen, I was ready to clap the cheeks of Sanji Blackfoot next. Link, I'm coming for you. What made this boss battle so time consuming was you could only attack him in two positions. The jumping leg attack, Dablo Jambe, and the move where he electric slides over to you. This guy has the walk of a paraplegic grandma. After being lulled to sleep by the running away and the two punch combo, I had finally defeated the captain of the Carla Guard team in an old fashioned nerd vs nerd dance off. Seeing that my case disc wasn't fully upgraded and I was getting doo doo damage out of it, I needed to level up before I fought Godskin Duo. So I went to go kill the Falling Star Beast because he drops 5 plus 7 smithing stones. Oh, this was a big mistake, because this might also be one of the worst bosses you can fight up close and personal. I was messing with the bull and definitely getting the horns. There are also plenty of other places in the game that you can get plus 7 spinning stones, so I don't recommend fighting this boss for the loot like I did. Oh shit. Fully grown falling star beast. Goodbye. Dan Hooker and Roy Nelson are up next. In a tag team luchador setting that even had Dana White scratching his head and why he signed these two journeymen. This might be the hardest boss I fought to kill the way I did. Because the bleed cheese was patched, I had to do it the old fashioned way. Which is a 35 minute boss battle of MC hammering him to death. I'm going to speed up the boss battle and only show the hits to give you a full idea of how long this took. Stop! Have a time! Damn, boy! Damn, boy! He's thick! Boy! That's a thick ass boy! My friend here, Justin, he's already taken, and he's cracked at Fortnite, my guy. Oh, oh. Knees weak, arms are sweaty, palms are heavy. Vomit on the controller already. Mom spaghetti. One more. One more. That, la that last one is actually the last of the Mohegan. You 
think you are I am enjoy strike to claim it a strike to claim it After exhausting every potion and rolling around like a piece of tumbleweed, God's can duo had been vanquished, and the hardest boss had been beat. I went to fight the putrid avatar in order to get the opaline hard tier, cause up until now I had not focused on my talismans and wondrous flask, till I had gone up against those two demons. The opaline hard tier increases defense, which was important against Malakath, and the winged sword insignia was going to be good to boost damage against him as well. Don't ask me why I took this long to get both these things. Also, I grabbed the Ritual Shield Talisman to boost defense further. Big Malekith was up next, and he kept killing me over and over and over again. Even the coffin dance started playing in my head. Bestiality clergyman, an oxymoron at that, made getting to Malakath hard with the proper amount of potions. A long john here, and a bear claw there, and we ain't talking about your local donut shop. The onslaught of beast clergyman was like a disgruntled ex-girlfriend throwing all your shit out of your own house. After being the fat red-headed kid picked last for the PE dodgeball team, and for good reason, Busted out the you got nothing to lose moves. If you can dodge a ball, you can dodge a thousand flying rocks. It took me a while to learn, but the attack you want to go in on a Malakath on is the pogo stick up the ass move. Every other attack you should dodge to the side of or away. I guess when it comes to animals, there really is thousands of different types of genders. Malakath and bestiality clergymen are living proof of that. There are three genders, four genders, even five. You're a fucking idiot. This needs to stop now. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm out of control. I apologize for that. Channeling my inner acrobatics as well, I dodge his three hate to see you get caught in the flame vortex move. Spamming Bloodhound step like my life depended on it. By the grace of Radagon, I escaped with minor scratches. I thoroughly enjoyed dodging around like a chicken with my head cut off in this battle, and I would recommend to anyone who wants to cheese Malakath to use the Caestus and Bloodhound Step. Very easy stuff. I will say Elden Ring feels like playing Guitar Hero. When you get the timing right of a boss move, hitting the perfect dodge feels like getting all the notes on a hard song. You could compare it to playing Through the Fire and Flames on Expert. Fitting because you're literally jumping through the flames on each attack. I was blessed by Iron Jesus at the end and got two of his pogo stick up the ass moves. In the name of Jesus! He goes for the final push at the end with a swipe that I easily electric slide through, like some hick at a barnyard dance. 
Oh, shit. Hulk Hogan was up next, and I felt like Peter Parker in a steel cage match, jumping from edge of the map to edge of the map. The first half of the battle, I enact my MLG like dodges to escape his head bashing attacks and definitely learned after many deaths how to perfect the beginning stage. This man was a mixture between Thor and Santa Claus, and I'm not talking about the jolly one. His roid rage could be felt from several workout machines over. Went in for the 300 fling myself move. This is Sparta! After chunking him with that bleed, I only had a couple hits left before he went Dragon Ball Z on my ass. This isn't even my final form. <laughs> like a freshly graduated high school influencer who claims to be all natural, Godfrey had a lot of explaining to do with those veins and that far from natty physique. You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch! You piece of shit! You fucking goddamn no. fucker! Oh god. Holy crap. The final head honcho was left, and probably one of the hardest bosses to hit up close with no shield or weapon distance. But I had made it this far. I was not going to give up for anything. Really going for it again? Radagon of the spamming order didn't know I was somewhat of a spammer myself. With only one move, my right bumper fist throw. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. How many fucking things can you shoot? Finally, that's a perfect move right now. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Drink this elixir. It'll give you the power of a thousand large mice. Equal to one human being. Mr. Fister, the Elden Lord, aka a alt version of Patty Pimblet. Fucking finally, fucking finally, the British man himself has made it. This man, this man has been mud wrestling. Bare knuckle fist fighting. Mr. Fister, the colon twister, has unlocked the Sigma achievement by beating the game with only a case disc.
Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. My next run will be the only club run, with no leveling and no summons, and I can only use a club I start out with at level 1. It's so easy, a caveman could do it.